Welcome back to the Niners Nation podcast. Not going to lie, this is a huge day for me. I've gotten to do a lot of cool things since I've gotten this job, but this is by far the coolest because I am honored to bring on my favorite football player of all time, a man whose poster hung above my bed as a kid for years, the greatest wide receiver in the history of football, Jerry Rice. Jerry, hello and how are you? How you doing? Happy holidays to you. Thank you. You too. I'm I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm trying to be professional. I'm geeking out a little bit. Hey, look, I'm looking at your background, man. It looks real cool. Hey, hey check you. out this right here. Oh, see, there's the bus. That's unbelievable. The bus, baby, that's the bus. <laughs> see, when you're the GOAT, you can do things like no, that. Hey, you know what? You guys made this happen for me. You know, you guys inspired me to try to be the greatest player that I could possibly be. Well, I, you're welcome, I guess. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I keep hearing, Jerry, all these discussions about people trying to talk about Randy Moss as the greatest wide receiver of all time. And I look at it and say, yeah, as long as you don't look at catches, yards, touchdowns, Pro Bowls, All Pros, Super Bowls, or Super Bowl MVPs, sure, Randy Moss could be the greatest player of all time. But if you look at anything that matters, you kick his ass. You know what, man? Randy Moss was probably the most gifted uh, receiver to ever play the game. He had the height, he had the speed, he had the jumping ability, all of those things. You know, for me, I just, I was just going to outwork you. I was not as gifted, you know, I, I remember coming in, uh, Dwight Clark helping me run my routes, you know, just the philosophy of the game, watching Montana, watching Ronnie Lott, all of those guys. And I knew the importance of teamwork. So I wanted to be that leader and I led by example and my teammates, uh, they responded by helping me really achieve so many records. So yeah, you know, like I said, I, you know, I might not be the most uh, gifted or anything like that, but I had that work ethic coming from, from Mississippi Valley State University, you know, what my parents, you know, what, what, they, what they gave me and, uh, and it was just no quitting me. Well, you are the GOAT as everybody knows. And now you're joining us on behalf of GOAT Fuel. You have created an energy drink along with uh, your daughter. And now you have brought on Trey Lance as one of your brand ambassadors. Tell us about Goat Fuel. Well, you know, Goat Fuel, uh, you know, my daughter came to me and they were into energy drinks and, but they were getting the jitters and they, it was all of the sugar that was in it. So they asked me about my regimen. <laughs> they were shocked about my regimen because I, you know, I'm still one of those guys that that continue to work out really hard, and I watch everything that goes into my body. And I think that's the reason why I was so productive for over 20 years. So we decided to, uh, you know, try to put a healthier energy drink out there, and we're having a great time. It's a black-owned company. Uh, we have ambassadors like uh, Tyler Hero, also Trey Lance. And, you know, to have Trey Lance on the team is something that's really special. And we're just going to continue to uh, to scale and, uh, and, and and try to get people to, to realize that it's just not about athletes being the greatest of all time. It could be an entrepreneur. It could be a frontline worker. It could be what you do. You know, anyone that have that, that question mark, dare to be great. It's about that GOAT family. And this is what we're building. And, and this is something that I have uh, really poured my heart into. I believe in it because I don't, I, I don't put my name on anything. But I have watched this grow from uh, ground up, and I'm excited about the opportunity. It comes in eight different flavors. You can get it at GOATFuel.com. You can go to the mobile app. And uh, if you go to GOATFuel.com, you can find the store nearest you as well. Tell us about Trey Lance a little bit, Jerry, because, you know, we haven't gotten to see a ton of him, especially not lately. You've gotten to know him a little bit. What stands out to you about him? Well, Trey Lance, I, you know, first of all, first of all, he won my uh, uh, the FCS uh, Jerry Rice Award, you know, the football championship uh, subdivision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had been in communications with him before the draft. And just to get him, get to know him as a person. Also, uh, his family is so supportive. Uh, I would say his dedication, his endurance, 
his uh, tenacity. Uh, he's one of those guys that that want to be great, but he wants to be the greatest. And I and I think he's going to make everybody better around him. He just got to get that experience and that knowledge. And uh, and and I think he's going to blossom, man. So I'm I'm excited about watching him excel and also about, uh, you know, fueling him the entire way. We've wanted to see him. I've wanted to see him, but I have to say the 49ers have put themselves in a good position right now. They're seven and six. They're coming off that win against Cincinnati. Brandon Ayuk gets the game winning touchdown in overtime. Crazy. Yeah. Can I say something about that? Sure. Yeah. Because with uh, Brandon Ayuk on, on that play right there, it reminded me something of Super Bowl 23 okay. when I when I stuck the ball out around the pylon and he did the same thing. And, and, and I'm sitting there watching that. And I said, huh, that looks for me. <laughs> well, OK, let's talk about Ayuk because, you know, early in the year, we're hearing that he's, you know, maybe not practicing the right way. And I'm sitting there thinking the 49ers have access to the greatest practice player of all time. Did they ever contact you and say, hey, can you show Brandon Ayuk how to practice the right way? Well, you know, I didn't know. I, I didn't hear that because I, they said it was something that they felt like it was a, a, a little setback where maybe uh, it has something to do uh, with the scheme or whatever. Then they also I, I saw someone did, they did something on on Brandon, Brandon Ayuk, where uh, they said, well, Jimmy G was not really looking to target him, mm -hmm. that he was getting open and he had opportunities, but Jimmy was going somewhere else with the ball. So I, you know, I don't know exactly, uh, you, you know, what caused everything, uh, the problem behind that. But I think the thing is, man, it has to do with practice. I, I made sure during practice that running certain plays, I made them work. Now, all of a sudden, you know, during the game situation, the team make that call. They know that that play can work because, you know, I have done it over and over during practice. Mm -hmm. so, so, so maybe that's it. You know, the ref during practice, you, you have to prove to, prove to the coaches that, uh, that if they call your number, that you're going to make it happen. We need to get you working with Ayuk and Debo. Can can you make that happen, please? Man, I, I watched those guys, man. Debo, what he's capable of doing. I mean, he has that body frame of a uh, of running back too, and he could, you know, he can run the ball. He can he can run routes. He can catch the ball. Uh, the physicality of him, you know, once he catches the ball. My, my thing back in the day as a receiver, I used to try to avoid, you know, defensive backs and, and, huh. and, and get, they, you know, my God, uh, Debo Samuel and, and George Kittle, they look for contact. Yes. I just, I'm, like, I'm like, what? That's different from, <laughs> you know, from back in the day. When I look at Debo, I almost see, he kind of reminds me of Terrell Owens. Does that make sense to you? God, man, Terrell was, Terrell was a beast, though. You would not believe the size of this guy mm -hmm. and his, his body structure and all of that. He, I, I don't, I, I, I've been trying to, you know, I've been trying to get a handle, too, on Debo. And I said, okay, because normally you don't see wide receivers like Debo Samuel. Yeah. You, you know, they're much smaller. You know, he's, he's more compact. He's, he's thicker and stuff yeah. like that, but he still got the quick, quickness where he can run away from you. So, so he's almost like that dual threat. And, yeah. and, and I hope the Niners continue using him, you know, running the ball and also, uh, you know, spreading them out and, and giving him opportunities. When I watch this team, of course, I'm edge of my seat, living and dying on every possession. I know you still follow the team closely, obviously. Is it still like that for you? Or are you able yeah. to kind of just step back and look at it in a different way? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm biting my nails. I'm doing everything, <laughs> man. It's, it's like this year just been crazy. It's been such an up and down year. 
And, you know, uh, when I played the game, we were all about uh, consistency, being able to win football games at home. You got to protect home field. That's that's first of all. And then be able to go on the road and still somehow find a way to win some games on the road. I think our problem is that uh, with the Niners, uh, they haven't protected home. They need to start doing that. They need yes. to take care of that. And, and it's going to be a big game against the Atlanta Falcons coming up this weekend. And don't take them lightly. You know, they need uh, Niners need to stay focused and they have to feel like we haven't done anything and go out and, and take care of this uh, this team. Man, Atlanta came in to Levi's and beat the 49ers. I know. I, in don't 2019. Me that. that hurt me. That hurt me so bad, man. I know. Oh. I know. So, so they need they need this week. Hey, say hey. Look, we we need to focus on this team. Every every game is an important game now. We we can't afford to to have another loss. We got to keep building. And if they if they can do that, because what four games to go? Yep. Hey, why not take all four? Let's oh. go get all four, man. That's the attitude they got to have. I want to see them on Sunday. When you're playing a team like Atlanta, they're kind of down on their – having a down year. Come out and step on them early. Go for the throat. Yes. Go for the throat, man. I'm serious. When we had teams down, we were going to choke them out. It was no way they were going to get back in the ball game. And, 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 I, and I think – doing a ball game when the Niners are, are winning, they take their feet off the gas just a little bit. Yes, I totally agree. They get conservative when they should be aggressive. They stay aggressive and just completely, you know, just take that team out. I hope they, I hope they do it because I feel like the longer that game stays close, the longer Atlanta starts to believe that they can win it. Well, look, I have no hair. Um, you know, what I'm saying? I, I can't, I can't pull my hair out. <laughs> yeah, it's, I hope they do too. I mean, you could make the argument if they just win the home games, the rest of the way, Atlanta and Houston, yes. they're going to get in the playoffs. Exactly. Exactly. But you, you know what? You got to stay focused and you got to work during the week. This did, I, I feel like we were at our best this time of the year. Because we, we, we were working on all cylinders. I mean, we, we knew exactly what to expect. We knew what we had as a football team. And now it's like the fun part is that you get a chance to go out and you do something special now, you know, and get yourself into the playoffs. Because once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. Absolutely. And I feel like, you get in and Kyle Shanahan can draw up one of those game plans like we saw against Green Bay where they just absolutely yeah. dominate. When he gets in his bag like that, I feel like there's nobody better and the 49ers could beat anybody. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, that play to Brandon Ayuk, I, have, I had never seen anything like that. I, I the, the, Really, the, the design of it and stuff like that where he came underneath. Yes. And... and, and, and uh, and where Jimmy was able to hit him uh, uh, with the football, but we 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 didn't we didn't run plays like that back in the day. <laughs> yeah, how much easier would your life have been if you could just cut behind the line of scrimmage and get open saying. across the field? E exactly, exactly. That would be so <laughs> easy. And you know, but we focus in on really running crisp routes. You you had to be able to run a good route where you got separation uh, from the defensive back where the quarterback could deliver the ball. Now they run in a lot of bubble screens, you know, with the run pass option, a lot of stuff underneath. And, and I think that really works in uh, Brandon Ayuk and also Debo Samuel, um, George Kittle. It works in their favor. I mean, that catch that George Kittle made, man, that's, that's ridiculous. At the end of regulation. I, I know it's just, it's just crazy, but you know, it's just like get the ball in the hands of your playmakers we have a great chance. So when it comes to running routes like that, because that's something people talked about with Ayuk, that he wasn't getting enough separation. What advice would you give to him to get more separation? Just be patient. Bill, Bill Walsh always said, win at the line of scrimmage. I, I mean, because a lot, a lot of times you don't see a lot of bump and run now. And, and maybe, maybe the reason uh, 
you know, these receivers are not getting as much separation is because they're a little impatient. Work the guy just a little bit longer where you can really, really get the separation that you, you need and where Jimmy G can deliver it to you. Now you, you have gotten that separation, you got the ball. Now you can get those uh, yak yards. Yeah, after the yak bros. So, which... so, so, so you got to have that patient way before. Sometimes receivers go too uh, quick because, you know, they're wide open. But, you know, the defensive back, those are the most gifted, well, probably the most uh, gifted athletes on the football field, and they're breaking on the ball. So that was something I learned early. You got to be patient. Be patient. Then you get that separation. Now you can do something with the ball. Well, uh, here's hoping that the 49ers keep it going because they – they're so frustrating, Jerry. Sometimes they look like they could beat anybody, and yeah. sometimes they look like they could lose to anybody. Yeah, hey, but you got to look at the Rams. Look at the Rams and, and the Cardinals. I, I mean, it's just in the L NFC, man, it's going to go down to the wire. This is going to be this is going to be crazy. And uh, it's just like, you know, like I said, every game is a fight, and you got to rally together. But it can be done, but you got to stay focused. Jerry Rice is here with us on behalf of Goat Fuel. You can go to goatfuel.com now to check the nearest location and to get yours. Um, let's talk about that then, Jerry. In the NFC, right now the 49ers are the sixth seed. We don't know who they're going to play. If you had to pick a matchup for them, who do you want the 49ers to play in the first round? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, man. <laughs> Very diplomatic. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it really doesn't matter because if you get in the playoffs – uh, the season just completely starts over. So, so you, you know, my thing is, but you got to get that stamp first. And I think once they get in, now it's like, okay, here's the deal. You know, yeah, you know, it's been a tough season. There have been a lot of ups and downs and stuff like that, but we're still here. Now we got a chance to do something that's really special. So, uh, you know, I didn't worry about that at all. And I feel like they've got so many guys on this team now because they brought so many people back. They're a really experienced team when it comes to the playoffs because of their run in 2019. So they're not going to be, even if they have to go on the road, which they probably will, they're not going to be kind of overwhelmed by the moment because they've done it before. Yes, yes. But I think they're a better team on the road. They have been this year for sure. <laughs> It's not even close <laughs> until they figure out, you know, uh, you know, that, okay, we got to take care of that, that home field and stuff like that. But maybe there's not as many distractions on the road. I don't, I don't know, but if they have to go on the road during the playoffs, I, I feel if they're focused and they have worked hard, uh, they should be able to win. A couple more questions for you. Not necessarily about this year's team. First of all, can we switch to the 94 jerseys all the time, please? But you in the 94 with the shadow, those are the best 49ers jerseys ever. Yeah, I know, man. I know. I, I, it was just something about those that really brought out the best in me. So, you know, and and I'm one of those guys that always felt like, you know, you had to look, look a certain way to play your best football. But it's just something that's really special about that, that uh, uniform. And my last question for you, I want to give you the chance because I always – talk about this guy as someone that I think should be in the hall of fame. And that's your former coach, George Seifert. You know, I think that people forget how good George was as a head coach, multiple Super Bowls. The 49ers went 14 and two in his first two seasons. That's incredible. Can I just allow you to stump for George Seifert a little bit? Cause I don't think he gets the respect he deserves. Well, George Seifert, he was a little bit different because he was one of those guys that was very superstitious. He never walked across the, the, you know, the logo of the San Francisco 49ers. He always had to have this uh, sweater, uh, you know, uh, the night before the game. And I think once he somehow he forgot the sweater and somebody had to go back and get it for him. <laughs> but <laughs> he was great, man. You know, as a you know, as a defensive coordinator, uh, the players that he had under him, uh, I mean, man, he did an outstanding job of coaching. 
And uh, then when he took over uh, as the head coach, he did a fantastic job too. I, I remember when, when we won the Super Bowl, he was waiting for everybody to lift him up, you know, in the air, you know, everybody, you know, we were just playing this joke on him and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, uh, you know, we picked him up and put him on our shoulders and stuff like that. But I think he was a great coach. I think he knew exactly what he wanted to do as a defensive coordinator. And I think he should be in, in, in the pro football hall of fame also, because uh, uh, he, he took over for uh, Bill Walsh. And, and those some big shoes to fill. I heard in that Super Bowl that Mike Shanahan was mad that Steve Young didn't throw two more touchdown passes. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, six was pretty good. I, you know, I don't, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. But you know, that game was just some. It was just something special, man. We wanted to make a statement, and you know, we were able to do that. We had such an outstanding team. Everybody showed up every day. Uh, everybody uh, that was willing to work, you know, put that, put that work in, put that time in, and, and it really showed on the football field. Just, you know, just great leaders. That was one of the best, for, not only one of the best 49ers teams of all time, one of the best teams, period. Deion Sanders told me that that is the best team he was ever on was that 94 team. I know you guys had a lot of, players that you kind of brought in just for that year right. Dion being one of them but I think people forget just the incredible talent that you had on that team yeah we had so much talent and you know we brought in Dion we needed that shutdown corner all of that and I, I remember that Super Bowl because I think I got a grade four uh separation and I was still able to play in that game and that came a time in in that game where my uh my shoulder pad it was exposed and I, and I couldn't lift my my arm to uh, put my jersey back on and and there was Dion. <laughs> Prime time helped me out. <laughs> wow. And that you couldn't lift your arm and you're playing in the Super Bowl getting touchdown catches. No well, problem. Yeah, because I was just not gonna let my my team down. That, that was it. Shoulder injuries, ACL injuries where you come back in the same season. It, it, nothing bothers you. You're fine. No, no, you know, you know what? It's just something special about you know winning football games for San Francisco. Uh, the fans, uh, I feel like we have some of the best fans ever. And I had some of the greatest teammates, you know, that really helped me be uh, the best football player I could possibly be and, and, and really break a lot of records and also win Super Bowls. Well, Jerry, I thank you very much for the time. Again, go to GoatFuel.com. It comes in eight different flavors. You can also go to the mobile app and it's available at select Safeway locations. Thank you very much, Jerry. Let's root for the 49ers going forward, and I hope we can do this again soon. Hey, let's go, Niners. Hey, you're a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank you.